third through fifth grade girls. Did you know that a girl's self-esteem peaks when she's nine years old? Nine. That means that she's the most confident she will ever be when she is in the fourth grade. Strong Women, Strong Girls focuses on raising ambition and combating the dangers of low self-esteem. They do this through a weekly after-school programming where college-age women go into the classrooms and conduct curriculum-based mentoring. At our sites, we have what we call site facilitators, who act as our points of contact. We ask them to stay after school and be available for, to the mentors for anything they may need during their sessions. My title of Strong Women, Strong Girls this year was Program Associate, and one of my favorite things to do was conducting site visits. This is when I got to get out of the office and go into the schools and community centers and actually see the program in action. I found it extremely rewarding to see the girls and mentors interacting. There's one particular site visit that I will always remember. It was early on in the year and mentoring had only been going on about a month. There was a pair of sisters at this site, and one of the sisters has gotten sick and gone to the nurse. The other sister still came to Strong Women, Strong Girls. About 10 minutes into the program, while they were still sharing their yums and yucks, somebody came into the room and told her and told the sister that her mom was there to pick her up and that she had to go home because Sissy was sick. The little girl turned around and looked at her mentors, and she immediately started crying. She was so upset that she had to miss the rest of the session. She had this much love for the program a month in. This site had the potential to be great. But there was one huge issue, the site facilitator. Through the one month of programming that had already occurred, she hadn't been present or engaged. She wasn't there the day that I visited, and she had even asked the mentors if they could cut programming by half an hour so that she could go home early. When I was debriefing with the mentors after the session, they said that not having an engaged site facilitator made them feel really uneasy. They didn't have somebody to reach out to if something was going wrong, they didn't know if the girls were receiving the accurate information, and they didn't have anybody to step in if there was an extreme behavioral issue. They didn't feel welcomed in the school, and that created a huge barrier. The mentors and girls were able to build strong relationships, but the program was not able to thrive. Communication lacked between the program and the site facilitator. Over the year, the site didn't grow, and few girls attended our spring field trip. The session was somewhere where the girls went once a week to have fun, and it stopped there. On the flip side to that, we were blessed with some truly amazing site facilitators. Every time the name Miss Perry came up in the office, it was followed by, oh my goodness, I love Miss Perry so much. We were lucky enough to have her as the contact for two of our sites, and those sites were two of our best. She was there for every after-school session, and she came to every event we invited her to, including our spring field trip, which she brought an unreal energy to. After four hours of being with 600 excited little girls, I was exhausted and ready to go home, but she wasn't. As I was directing people out to the buses at the end of the day, she walked by me and said, thank you. She then took a girl in each hand and said, all right, you girls ready to go home? Who had fun today? What was your favorite part? And off she went to the buses with the same amount of energy that she walked in with. She truly went above and beyond for these girls. I visited one of her sites during an end of year celebration, and I was blown away by the amount of effort that she had put into it. She had ordered the girls pizza and got together snacks, and, and then she ended the session by giving each girl a set of pirate tickets to attend a game with her family. I remember the mentor saying, Miss Perry is the best. Our site is the best. We have loved this year. Ms. Perry also kindly gave me tickets to attend the game. In between innings, I observed her getting up and moving around the section to say, he say hello to every girl and parent, addressing about 30 of them by the name. They were all so excited and thankful to be there. Because of Ms. Perry's involvement and dedication, Strong Women, Strong Girls became more than an after-school program. It became its own community. So school staff and communities, let's step up to after-school. You need to be more involved with after-school programs in order for them to reach their full potential. From these two examples, you can see that programs with an engaged site facilitator really thrive. If your school doesn't have the necessary support, you can look to your parents. There are many who want to be involved and help. Organizations, you can consider adding incentives for your after-school contacts. If your capacity allows, you can add a stipend in exchange for their work. In addition, you can consider offering outside trainings and networking events to assist in their professional growth. 
Lastly, I want to challenge you all to dive deeper into this and identify the problems behind it. Why can't school staffs be more involved? Are they properly informed about the program that they're supposed to be supporting? Do they even know that they have this responsibility? Do they feel as if they need another training or orientation? Or are the issues deeper than that? Are they constantly worried because their, size, their class sizes are too big? Or are they constantly thinking about how to feed every kid in their class because they're always complaining they're hungry? Once the problems are identified, we can all work together to figure out solutions. After school providers want to be in the schools, we want to make that impact. We just need to meet each other halfway.